Hello again, honors chemistry students. This is Mr. Spurk. This is your chapter 9, section 2 notes on naming and writing formulas for ionic compounds. Now, again, this is something else we've already covered, so we're going to cruise through this pretty quickly. Binary ionic compounds. A binary compound, remember bi means two, is composed of two elements. It can be ionic or molecular, which we know is covalent. So for ionic compounds, all you're going to do is write each ion with the symbol in charge, crisscross and reduce, get the lowest whole number ratio, and we do not write ones. So for example, magnesium and chlorine, we should know by now that magnesium is in group two and it's a metal, so we write the cation first. It's in group two, so it's going to lose two valence electrons to be Mg2+. Chlorine is in group 7a, so it's going to gain one electron, so it's going to become Cl minus. We crisscross those charges, and then we write Mg. Technically, it looks like we brought down a 1, but remember, we don't write 1s. Cl, and we took a 2 outside. And again, remember what this means is that we have Mg2+, plus, and to balance that out, we would need two Cl minuses. Remember, the other way that we did this was drawing all these out. And we connected the dots, and we drew a second one in. You can do this any one of those three ways. But again, this crisscross method is the quickest. And as long as you reduce, you will get the correct answer. So if you know the formula, you can write the name. So the first thing you have to do is be sure that the compound is ionic. And remember, that's a metal with a nonmetal. You're going to name the cation first, followed by the anion. And lucky for you, the formula, the cation, is written first. So remember that anions end in IDE. So let's name these. We have LIBR, which would be lithium bromide. We have ALCL, which is, sorry, that should be ALCL3. Please fix that on your paper. Should be aluminum chloride. And then we look at CuO. Now, this one can be a little bit trickier because we know, or we should know, that copper is a transition metal. So it's going to need a Roman numeral. But in order to figure out the Roman numeral, we need to know what charge is on that copper. So here's how we figure this out. We sort of need to break this down or break it apart. So let's look at copper, which we don't know its charge. But if we look at oxygen, we do know oxygen's charge. Oxygen is always 2 minus. Now, look at our ratio here. We have a 1 to 1 ratio copper to oxygen. So if oxygen is 2 minus and there's only one copper, what charge must be on that copper? Hopefully, you figured we must need a copper 2 plus. I'm sorry, I keep hitting my next key. Um, so since we have copper 2 plus, we would name this copper parenthesis 2 oxide. Copper to oxide. All right, ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. So these are the same rules as binary ionic compounds. Never, ever change the formula of the polyatomic ion. It is what it is. If more than one is needed, you place parentheses around the formula and the subscript outside. Now, writing these is something that is new for us. So ammonium and chlorine. So we should know that ammonium has a formula of NH4 plus 1, and chlorine is Cl1 minus. So just like before, we crisscross our charges. We get a 1 to 1 ratio, so NH4 Cl. Let's do a few more. Lithium and carbonate. Lithium is in group 1, so it's a plus 1. Carbonate is CO3, 2 negative. Crisscross our charges. So we're getting 
Li2CO3. And the next one, calcium hydroxide, we have Ca is a 2 plus. Hydroxide is OH that shares a 1 minus charge. And we're going to crisscross. Now, we are going to have a 1 to 2 ratio, right? We are going to need two hydroxides for every one calcium. So to show that, we have to write Ca OH2. Since there are more than one polyatomic ions needed, we have to put that in parentheses. Because otherwise, look at what it would look like. CaOH2. Now this tells us that we only have two hydrogens and one oxygen, which we know is not the case. So you must use those parentheses when you have multiples of polyatomic ions. Now to name these, you just follow the same rules as the binary ionic, uh, binary ionic formulas. You name the cation first, then name the anion. So again, these polyatomic ions come from our list. So if you need to have that out, please have it out. So we have NaClO. So here's our cation. Here's our polyatomic ion. Na we know is sodium. And ClO is hypochlorite. Sodium hypochlorite. Here we have our cation and then our anion. Sorry, I should keep it, keep it straight. Cation, anion. So the cation is ammonium. And now when we name them, we don't need to say how many there are. So when we name them, we don't need to say ammonium 2. It's just ammonium carbonate. And lastly, here's our cation and our anion. So we have iron, and iron is a transition metal, so we know we're going to have a Roman numeral, but let's hold off on that for a second. And then we have ClO3, which is chlorate. Now, to figure out what iron we have here, look at our subscript outside. When we crisscross that, we have three so it's a 1 to 3 ratio. So you need to know that ClO3 has a 1 minus charge. And if there are 3 of them, then that must mean we have iron 3. So 1, 2, 3. Iron 3, chlorate. As always, all the information on these slides has been acquired and adapted from Pearson Chemistry, 2012 edition of the textbook, the resources CD, and pearsonchem.com. Have a great day.